We are here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Marcy Phillips, who is the Teacher of the Year for 2013 for the Center Joint Unified School District. Thanks for being with us. Absolutely, thank and you. Congratulations. Thanks. Tell us about yourself. Tell us uh, you know, where you teach, what you teach. Okay, I teach at Oak Hill Elementary. It is um, in Antelope, California. I am currently teaching a combination class of fifth and sixth grade. I did that last year and this coming up year, Prior to that, it was fifth grade and third grade and wherever else they put me. What's it like teaching a, a combination class? Um, it's challenging, but very rewarding. Um, challenging because I'm trying to do double curriculum. Very rewarding because you really get a chance to see how the kids interact with each other and help each other grow. And, and do they end up kind of the older kids almost mentoring the younger yeah, kids? Yeah, a little bit. Um, didn't, I don't want to take the sixth grade stuff away from them to make them fifth grade mentors. Um, they actually kind of bring the fifth graders up to what they're doing. It's, um, at least last year, it was, it was exciting to see my fifth graders want to not only excel at their fifth grade level, but participate in some of the sixth grade stuff. And that those fifth graders are looking forward to sixth grade because they think they have it all dialed and they're going to do great. So it was very exciting. So what was it like being named a Teacher of the Year? Um, you know, when I first heard the announcement come over the intercom, I was very honored, very shocked, but very honored, um, and it was exciting. The, the one that probably got me the most, however, was when they decided I would be the district teacher of the year, um, because I had gone through a process of interviews and, and them coming to see me in class, but they didn't say anything for months. And kind of just thought, okay, I'm going to forget about it and hopefully whatever happens, happens. And then the superintendent and group from the district office came with balloons and uh, flowers and surprised me in class. And that was um, more than exciting. And my students were crazy, mm -hmm. had to reel them in for the rest <laughs> of the day, but it was a lot of fun. But that one really made me um, excited and yet very humbled being that there are some really fantastic teachers at my school specifically at Oak Hill, but even in the district, I've, I've learned and been mentored by so many of them that it, it, was, it was a little bit humbling, mm -hmm. exciting but humbling. So uh, how long have you been a teacher now? Um, I am going into my 13th year. Okay. Uh, in that amount of time, what kind of changes have you seen in education that, have, you know, that maybe have created greater challenges for you or make things easier? What would you say? Um, unfortunately, we've, we've lost a lot of, of stuff. Um, when I first started there, we had specialists that would take the kids for art and for music, and so the kids had a really good specialized education. And while that was going on, we had a little collaboration time and um, professional growth time. That was taken away. Um, so it was a little challenging for both the students losing out on some of those specialties and for the teachers losing out on some of their collaboration time. Um, and then the classroom sizes have definitely gotten bigger. Uh, more and more thing we're asked basically we're asked to do so much more and more every year with less and less so it's definitely been a little more challenging um, I think one of the things though that makes the teachers at Oak Hill as and and center some of the best teachers is that you you kind of just go with the flow it's well this year we're gonna have more kids and we're gonna have less library help and less computer help but we have to make it work the experiences for the students so that's been the biggest challenge is not letting the students feel that anything's changed. So in your teacher toolbox, one of the tools you have is flexibility. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would say that's key. Yeah. yeah. So tell me about a typical day in your classroom. What are some of the things you do to kind of energize your students, to motivate them? Um, one of the most important things to me is I need to feel connected to my kids more than just um, teaching them whatever lesson. I, I feel I want to know them. I want them to know me a little bit so we have a comfort level. Um, so our typical day, the kids have to line up at the black blacktop and we pick them up there. So I always try to go out there about five, 10 minutes early and catch up. All right, what'd you guys do this weekend? Did you watch American Idol? Did you, you mm -hmm. know, I try to just know what's going on in their world because once we get in the door, we have to start getting, um, getting busy. So I try to catch up, know, uh, know what they're like. We get into class. And then they immediately start on whatever um, morning work they have. And typically, we rotate through who is going to do the correcting. So someone will correct, and they ask um, for raised hands, and the kids are all participant in correcting all the work. And I kind of sit back 
towards the back of the room and wait for somebody to need a further explanation. If one of the other students couldn't do it, or they feel stuck, that's when I'll step in. But for the most part, um, the, at least the beginning of the day always starts with them helping each other. Uh, then we do a lesson, and with fifth and sixth grade, I had a lot of fifth grade is independent while I'm teaching a sixth grade lesson and vice versa. Um, so they got very good at being working in groups and asking right questions, and I had to set up the classroom a little bit differently, so they had whiteboards and um, computers at their, at their access. But um, when, when everybody started working together, it really became a, a cooperative classroom. Well, it sounds like you're not only the teacher, but you're the facilitator if you're allowing them that much freedom to kind of direct themselves in many ways. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the strengths in, in teaching is having the kids um, want to learn, not just being forced to learn. They, I want them to be active participants in their learning. And so one of the things that is very important to me is that they find that way to be an active participant. And how does that positively impact what they do when they're actively participating? I think it means more to them when it's their, it's their work and their ideas and they've helped each other. Um, it's, it becomes more significant as opposed to just, okay, I did one through 12 and I got that answer right. It, it makes them feel um, more that it was their contribution as opposed to just reading a book. Um, and, and they talk about it. And uh, one of the things I was just saying um, with my, in my last uh, interview, they were asking about the Common Core Standards, and I'm very excited about this new, um, this new way of doing things because it encourages group learning and um, and hands-on and discussing rather than just having a right answer. There's many different ways to find that right answer. I think it's important in life to become a lifelong learner, and I model that um, myself just by I constantly am taking classes and I'm constantly going online to find a better way to do something or ask a teacher in the teaching community how they've done something. And I think mm -hmm. my students see that and they find that that's exciting for them too, to continue to learn and grow on their own. And teaching that collaborative learning um, can no doubt transfer to the workforce because it's we, we live in a collaborative workforce Absolutely. world. Absolutely. I know before I, before I became a teacher, I was working um, in hotels. I was a sales manager at a hotel and everything we did was collaborative you know to find find business and to um, work amongst the different groups at the hotel and every every career you go into you need to be able to work with people so I think it's an absolute stepping stone for their future so how did you get into teaching um, <laughs> long story but I'll try <laughs> to make it short uh, as a, as a child, I always thought I was going to be a teacher. My mother was a teacher. It, my aunt was a teacher. It was just kind of in my blood. Um, but I have to say, all my relatives said, don't go into teaching. They make no money. Don't go do something else. And so I listened to them. And so I, I worked in hotel sales. I did quite well. I finally got to a point financially that I'm like, OK, maybe financially is not the most important thing. I really want something more personally gratifying. Um, so I got my teaching credential and mm. started anew. What inspired you to do that? What really made you take that big step? Um, two things really made me make that big step. One, I had children of my own. Hmm. And um, I just seeing them and seeing how excited they were to learn every new little thing, whether it was walking or you know, using a fork, um, just got me excited. And I thought, you know, as much as I love the hotel industry and travel, um, there's just something more personally gratifying to help someone or guide someone to learn. So my first order of business was to talk to some people at my hotel and we joined with a school um, in, I think it was in West Sacramento, and we became, some of the salespeople became mentors to mm -hmm. some of the underprivileged kids there. And there I ended up mentoring a little boy there who was in fourth grade. And I was his mentor for about four months. and. That was the most fun of my entire week. I'd go to work and I'd do all my work things and my clients were great, my staff was great, but my most fun was when I got to go see um, my student over at the school and I said, this is silly, this is what I should be doing. And here you are today and here as I a am. teacher of the year. <laughs> go figure. Go figure. Well, congratulations to you and, Thank you and thanks much. for your time. We've been speaking with Marcy Phillips, who is the teacher of the year for the Center Joint Unified School District. Thank you. Thanks for your time.